Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Studio Plugin. In this video, I'll be showing you guys how I mix and master in FL Studio. So I'm pretty much showing the steps that I take from uh, beginning to end from mixing, leveling, and mastering my track. I'm not going to be getting in debt. Uh, certain things do as I'm just trying to show you my process and how I get the most cleanest beat or sound after I'm making my beat. So uh, this is just my process. If you guys uh, want to learn and know what compression or EQing or any of these things that I'm going to be using in this video are, uh, just let me know in the comment section but uh, if you want to just make beats and you just want to be a beat maker, then you don't really necessarily need to know all these things. Just uh, know how to quickly mix and get it done so you can have a clean mix and get it out there so you can start selling on BeatStars, you know, or things like that. But um, and I also have a mixing and mastering kit in case uh, you guys already learned from this video or you want a mixing and mastering kit where you guys can just drag and drop presets into your uh, mixer channel so you guys can just level up and uh, have a clean mix right off the back without having to do everything one by one. Or you guys could also save your own presets um, whatever you guys want but anyway in this video like i said i'm just gonna show you guys my process of how i make my beats sound crisp but anyway let's go and get started with this tutorial All right, so to begin off mixing and mastering, I'm just gonna let you guys know that this is pretty much my method when it comes down to mixing and mastering. I'm not going by the book. How everybody else would say, um, I just do whatever I feel is best when I'm mixing and mastering. So if you heard my tracks and you guys like the mixing and mastering that I do, then you guys can follow this. If you guys don't, you guys can go ahead and leave this video now. Um, but for this video, this is more of just a guide of how I like to do it. So the first things first is make sure that you have your whole track laid out. Once you have your whole track laid out, make sure that you highlight all your sounds right in the channel rack. And after you highlight them, go to the mixer rack. And on the first track, just push Control Shift L and all of them will lay out here. And if you guys want to have the coloring like I did, just make sure to color it here while it's highlighted by going on this drop down arrow and going to rename or color select and go to gradient anyway after you have that you're gonna see that everything is um it's not mixed down it's not mastered if you guys can see i have all the stuff that i've already added they're all turned off because i'm just gonna show you guys how i would do it with fl studio plugins so i have even my mastery channel off everything is off so this is how it sounds now and it might be a little loud so uh, just lower your volume. I'm, I haven't played it yet, so I'm not sure how loud it's gonna be. So uh, this is how it sounds So you guys can notice that it was already clipping um, a lot of people will say that clipping is good. Clipping is nice. Uh, my preference, I don't really like the clipping. Uh, you, you don't have to click just to mix and master. You guys can get the same clipping sound just by adding some distortion. The first thing you're going to want to do when making sure you're going to mix and master is starting with the first track that you have is add an EQ. And we're going to be adding an EQ for every single VST that we have out. And a lot of people are always going to say um, the best EQ to make your kick louder would be cut off at 100 which would be around here 100 hertz and you guys can see the numbers right here moving you guys could also see the numbers up here on top and a lot of other people say cut off at 200 maybe 150 some people even say 300 or even 400 and like i said the case is you don't have to listen to what everybody says or everybody was is going about um it's just all preference and whatever you feel sounds the sharpest so the way i would do it is on this number one knob is just right click it and on the type, set it to high pass. So now you have a low pass kind of brick. And I'm just gonna move it to about 100. I'm gonna say about 150, that way it keeps a little bit of the low ends. And you guys can also use this little uh, high pass knobs here and you can move them to whatever steps you guys want. I'm just gonna have two steps right here, which is steep four. And then I'm going to bring the highs just a little bit up just to give it a little bit more brightness and clarity to it. And when you're bringing it up, you're just pretty much bringing up the volume to that uh, specific value of where the hertz are in the whole frequency chart. Now let's go on to the next one. Add a parametric EQ as well to this one. And we're just going to follow the same steps. Right click, type, high pass, steep 2 or steep 4. And now we're just going to mess around with it. Thank you. 
Now we go on to the ambient. And you guys can take your time, just you don't have to do too much or be extra with it. Um, this is just for a quick mix down. And again, this is for pretty much uploading your beats or trying to show your beats off from your beat, star or, uh, beat store or YouTube. So let's set a high pass, steep four. Let's go to the snare. Same process, setting a high pass. And now right here, I'm just adding a little bump, which is just bringing up the volume into this little uh, section here. Now I'm again to my 808 and we're going to do the same thing on the first one at a high pass. But now on seven, we're going to add a low pass filter and I'm going to drop it down to about 30 Hertz. And I'm also going to bring it up to a gentle four steeps. Or about a four steep and cut off some of the highs as you don't really need a lot of the high frequencies but mid frequencies are good in your 808 just to give it a little bit more uh, saturation and after you have that let's get into the hi-hats so for the hi-hats I like to add reverb to them for some reason it just gives it more clarity to them now we add the parametric EQ Now let's move on to our kick and you can already see that it's clipping so I'm just going to bring it down once we have the EQ. Same process, high pass filter, I'm going to bring it down to steep 4. I'm going to bring it to 40 and also on the low pass I'm going to bring it down to about mid. And it also varies for which sounds you're using. So the switch sound is just a crash that has a little bit of low end, so I'm also have a filter. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like that. So now that is the whole entire EQ process. Once you have that, let's go ahead and just highlight all the notes that we just did or all the channels. And now we're going to start picking up the sounds. I like to start off with the main instrument. I know it says plugs here, but for this one, I have a piano. And I like to set it to around 30 dB. And after I add the master, you'll know why. Also, when master, uh, mixing it down, a lot of uh, other people would suggest to merge your whole entire tracks into mono because that's what you're going to hear pretty much whenever you're playing out of any type of speakers and TV, pretty much so to say. But I like to just play it in stereo. But if you guys want to go to mono, you guys can just bring it up and go mono. Uh, just train your ear and then you can get to that point of just going in stereo. But anyway, let's continue with this mix down. So this part is just leveling out the whole mix.
After we've done that, go to the master channel now that we're done with the mixing and leveling process. And since I already have slot 9 and 10 filled with uh, my own mastering presets, I'm just going to add a new one. And remember, these are off, so these ones don't matter as I'm doing a new one and they're shut off. So I'm going to add a Maximus since this is an FL Studio tutorial. But I do like to use Ozone 8 mastering pre uh, plugins or even Neutron or even uh, Fab Filter. As I said, since this is a FL Studio tutorial, I'm going to go with Maximus. And the reason why I use Maximus is because it gives it saturation and more clarity and more depth to your whole mix down rather than just adding a uh, soft clipper or a compressor that just pretty much just clips your track. That's pretty much all it's doing is just bringing up your volume, um, your whole leveling. But if that's your preference, you guys can go ahead and use it. I have nothing against it. Just my preference is using Maximus. So I'm going to extend Maximus. And now within Maximus, I'm going to start off with this low end. I'm going to click it on solo. And from here, we're going to start uh, compressing just a bit. So you guys can see that right here is where we need to add some of the compression. Before I start any of this, I like to also mess with the pre. So if I bring it down, you're not going to hear none of the 808. So now for this part, this is where your preference kind of starts kicking in. So if you're a bass head and you like more bass, add more bass. If you're a, a mid head or a high head or whatever it is, uh, just add more of that. So this is like another way of leveling, but now you're leveling down on uh, your low, mids, and highs. And before we start this process, we're going to separate them so that way we're more in depth with it. So let's go to the bands and we're going to turn on this knob right here that shows the spectrogram. And we're going to mess with the low end right here. And the lows are usually around 150, so I'm just going to bring this to 150. And let's solo it out. Now let's move to the high and mids. And we're going to bring the high down since we're listening to the mids right now until we don't hear a lot of the hi-hats. About 1500 is fine and now we don't have to do nothing to the highs since we already messed with the lows and highs. And now this is the part where I was talking about where we can start mix in, mixing in the low mids and highs. So now we go back to monitor. Let's bring down the pregain. And now let's start picking it up. Another thing I like to do is in the lows, we have the stereo separation tool down here. Just bring it up to until it's on mono. And now we have everything merged for the low ends. For the mids, I like to separate it. So let's separate it to about 10%. And the highs, I also like to separate it to about 25%. And you guys can also add saturation if you guys like. But for this video, I'm not going to be adding saturation on the low mids or highs. After we've done that, Let's click on the graph so we freeze it. And now we're going to right click over here to start bringing in a threshold. And now we have one right here. Keep the line straight. And now we're going to drop it down up here. And you guys can see how much it's bouncing back up here. And that's pretty much good where it's at. I might bring it down just one more. We're not trying to over compress, so I'm just going to leave it there. Pause it right here so we can get a idea of where it should be at. The line should always be where the average uh, volume is at. Again, we're not trying to over compress. Now to the next one. And for the highs, definitely do not over compress because you're going to hear all that 
uh, squishiness that you're not even trying to hear. It's just going to mash it all up and it's not going to sound very pleasant. Anyway, for the last part, we're also going to mess with this. And I'm just going to bring it down one. And right here, I'm going to bring the threshold all the way down. And for this part, I'm going to bring up the post gain. Once we bring up the post gain, it's going to pretty much stop up here. And that's bringing up the volume without everything being uh, clipped and everything being mixed and mastered now. If your mix isn't touching the top, what you can do is before Maximus add a fruity limiter and you guys can bring up the volume here or you guys can put the volume, the fruity limiter under Maximus and we can bring it up from here. And that's pretty much it on how to mix and master in FL Studio. This is pretty much just a quick rundown, not explaining too much, but just breaking it down uh, to the key topics and trying to do it as fast as I can for you guys. So you guys can also knock out mixing and mastering as fast as you guys can without, uh, you know, having to do every single little detail. A lot of the detail always does matter, but this is pretty much all you need when you're mixing and mastering. You don't got to add all these extra plugins, add all these extra effects. But if you guys would like to, that's optional. Like I said, everything in this is optional. Whatever you like is what you like, and that's what you'll do. All right, so that's how I mix and master in FL Studio. So if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, comment, subscribe, give me some feedback. Let me know what you guys like to see next. And also, if you guys are interested in purchasing the mixing and mastering preset kit that I have available at Studio Plugged on it, you guys can go ahead and check that out. I have the link down in the description below. So make sure to click on the link if you guys are interested. And if you guys learn from this video, just make sure to give it a like. Anyway, that is all for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. So we'll just leave it at that.